Hey everyone, it's Norma with Norma Mitchell Photography and I wanted to show you how to edit without using an action. And so let's get started. All right, so first things first, zoom in, see if there's anything on the skin that I want to edit. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate, fix skin, grab my clone brush. You can use the patch tool if you want. I personally like to use the clone brush. And I set my opacity at 90%. Personal preference, I just feel that it blends in better. Okay, so her skin looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and just flatten the image. Okay, so I'm going to do a levels layer. I'm going to increase the brightness a touch. All right, and now I'm going to soften the light a little bit. bring out some of her detail, another levels layer. So I'm going to bring up the blacks. All right, I'm just going to title this um, black detail so I can remember. This one is soft and light. This is just brightness. So if I need to go back, I know what layer to mess with. Okay. Now I'm going to work on the redness of her skin. I'm going to do a quick mask, which is Q, and then I'm using my brush to just go over the areas where I just want to work on the redness. And I can adjust that later. And then Q again, so it makes a selection. I'm going to use my selective color. I'm going to make sure this is on red, so I'm going to pull my magenta out of the skin tone. And then I'm going to lighten up that area. Okay, and now I'm going to work on her fingers a little bit more. So again, I'm going to use a quick mask. And that is the letter Q on my keyboard and then I'm using a brush and then I press Q again it makes a selection do a selective color layer and I'm gonna pull out some of that cyan cyan that's in the fingers as well a little bit more of the magenta lighten it up a touch maybe a little bit more okay And now I want to go ahead and bring out the details of the eyelashes. I'm just going to retitle these layers. All right, so when I do the details, duplicate layer, eyelash, I'm going to run go to filter other high pass 23.1 doesn't have to be an exact number just somewhere in this area click OK and then I'm going to change this to a soft light so this is without and then this is within with the high pass layer and I'm going to make this a mask. I'm going to invert it. And then I'm going to grab my brush. Make sure it's a white brush because this is a black layer. And I'm going to paint where I want to bring out the details. And 
going to reduce the opacity. All right. And so the next thing that I want to do is I'm going to soften the skin. I'm going to do a duplicate layer. And on my other video, I did show softening the skin with using a high pass. In this one, I'm going to use the blur. I'm going to do a Gaussian blur. And just go until it's really blurry. I'll go 36. All right. And then, of course, make this a mask invert. I'm going to make another duplicate layer before I do anything, and I'm going to bring back some of the detail on the skin when I soften it. And this layer is going to be another high pass layer. So I'm just going to bring that down to the 20s, change that to a soft light, and I'm going to bring, make it a mask as well. And just bring the opacity down quite a bit. So that way I'm not losing all the detail when I am softening the skin. So now I'm going to soften the skin using a brush. Make sure it's a white brush on the black layer. Avoid the eyelashes and the eyebrows and the nose. Don't worry if it looks a little too blurry because then you're going to go up here to opacity and you're going to drop that opacity down to where it looks natural, usually around 30. All right, so I am done with the baby. And now I'm going to make a duplicate layer and then I'm going to fix the background using my clone brush. You could again use a patch tool on this or if you have a blanket fade um, action you can run that on this to make everything look a little smoother but this gets the job done for me. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and run my unsharp mask. So I do a sharpening on all of my images at the very end. Check my numbers, looks good. All right, and then I would go ahead and save this as a PSD file. That way if I need to come back and edit the photo, I can do so. And then once I save it as a PSD file, I will go ahead and crop it to my 15 by 11 crop. That way when my clients go to make their prints, the 15 by 11 crop is really a helpful starting point. Okay, and then from here I would save it as a large JPEG. And then once, once that's done, I would go ahead and resize it. So when I'm resizing for the web, I have an action for that or let me show you how I would do it without the action. So I would go ahead and flatten my image. I would go up here to image, image size. So my width is going to be 960. I'm going to go down to resolution and click type in 72. And then of course it adjusts that. So I'm going to type in 960 again and it'll um, figure out what the height is. And so that looks good. Click OK. And I'm going to bring it back up. I'm going to go ahead and do another unsharp mask just for the web. And I don't want it to be as strong. So just kind of see what looks good to you. And that looks good. Click OK. And then here you can go ahead and place your 
logo. So I'm going to file, place, search for my watermark. It's really easy to make an action that does all of this for you. That way you're not having to run through this process over and over again. All right, and then I would go ahead and save this. Save for web and devices, PNG 24 if you're posting on the blog or Facebook, and then go ahead and click on save. Um, if you're saving for a client, then go ahead and click on JPEG. All right, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Thanks for watching. Bye.